turned to be an architect. So two years ago, when uh, I came to Green Tech as a young architect, I was trying to get help and figure out how to implement a greenhouse on a rooftop. And uh, people I met were quite polite, but probably just polite and uh, unwilling to spend time on projects that they view at the time as crazy. So two years after today, uh, I'm very, very happy to see that a vertical farming conference is basically opening the green tech trade show. Things are moving fast and that's great. Through the numerous researches, interviews and analysis performed to fuel the white paper state of vertical farming industry, I would like to expand on the main points that vertical entrep farming entrepreneurs and growers will need to go through in order to build their future within the vertical farming developing industry. First of all, who are the players? Consumers, of course, who welcome testful, sane and locally grown products. Vertical farmers, meaning aquaponics and hydroponics entrepreneurs, selling vegetables or turnkey farm solutions and even modular systems. There is still a limited number of projects also growing rapidly and some players are beginning to roll out the concept. To date, to give you an idea, the biggest operator is probably Gotham Green in the US with four different uh, units under management. Then distributors, both vegetable wholesalers and supermarket chain. They benefit from key logistics and distribution infrastructure in place and are able to invest into farms. As examples, the trade group we spread in Japan or Eco Jager in Switzerland, and the Metro uh, supermarket chain testing production inside the supermarket in Germany. We also have two to three different projects on top of existing food marketplace, marketplace who are basically coming. Then real estate developers. They are for now attracted by the cool tech factor of vertical farming, although probably still a bit shy about it. And the agriculture world, which is now investing time to understand better the uh, vertical farming concept. We should, of course, mention equipment manufacturers who support the vertical farming industry developments. Today, various business models are explored from production to distribution and also including sometimes transformation. The distribution strategy is very, very important. It is to be defined prior to the implementation of the farm in connection with the analysis of the catchment area density and market demand. Logistics and distribution retained will have a very big impact on profitability and on operations. It ranges from distribution through supermarkets to direct distribution, even including basket delivery, for instance, and some vertical farmers supplement their own production with close to the city ba ground-based organic production. This is uh, basically the case of Lufa in, in Quebec um, and also the, the case of the Trois Tauvert project which is coming in Paris. This is nevertheless difficult at this stage to see whether wholesalers and supermarkets will integrate production and to which point or if vertical farmers will organize their own distribution channels to reach consumers in order to capture more value. Now, I would like to, to share a prospective view and project ourselves 15 years from now. I'm absolutely convinced that by then, by then in urban dense cities, no building will be designed without a potential vertical farming program. It will benefit to both the hosting building but also to the grower activity and to the neighborhood. So what steps do entrepreneurs need to perform to keep the leadership and move toward this vision? The first step is to educate the financial world in order to get the proper financial resources. There are mainly three different steps in a project. The first step is for the team to prove itself technically through a test format and raise attention. The second step is for the first commercial unit to be implemented. It's probably not smaller than 12 to 1500 square meter in the case of a rooftop greenhouse. There is an execution risk here with an important capex to be spent. And after 
a ramp up period of about 12 to 24 months, the farm is like a bond, it's very stable. We are about three years from the beginning of the project and about three to five million dollars a euro have been consummated since inception. Then the rollout may start. Test format and first farm commercial ramp up are truly startup risks and investors need to be properly compensated for that, while post ramp up phase enjoy stable cash flow characteristics, although capped per farm unit. At this stage, the profile of the project is close to an infrastructure business. These are two very distinct periods with a very different risk profile, which typically relates to different investor profile. Proper tools need, the, though, to be designed and explained to investors in order for them to understand and be in a, poten be in a position to create the proper pool of investment. The second step is to provide further market depth, which implies training growers and attract them to project. It will give real estate developers the operational alternatives they need when they want to host a farm and prove them and move them from a cool tech factor to real estate value enhancement, not only through unused uh, space monetization, but through true program intrication. We are talking here about building integrated agriculture, including insulation benefits, use of waste energy, water recycling, HVAC benefits, etc. As soon as the real estate owner or developer will understand that the project viability is not subordinated to only one vertical farmer ability to operate, he will be more willing to plan BIA and even perform the BIA investment, meaning basically to build and finance the envelope of the greenhouse. The third step is to enhance the business model in order to lower operational costs and capex, improve yields per square meter, and therefore be in a position to reach affordable price points for consumers. Regarding rooftop greenhouse environment, building integrated agriculture to lower capex and avoid adaptation costs, and 3D farming to improve yields per square meter will probably be key here, as well as enhancing the removability of the equipment through plug and play designs. What I mean by 3D farming are developments such as vertical harvest in Jackson Hall in the US or Affinor grower rotating equipment in Vancouver. In full artificial lighting environment, artificial lighting developments, HVAC and workflow improvements will also be key. Having said that, finding proper space of size is today and will remain a constraint and a key success factor. That's the reason why I would like to introduce to you a thought which relates on the size of the farms to be implemented. Let's think out of the box and adapt the concept to smaller spaces, which are more numerous. Be in a position to operate networks and probably mix grower activity with other locally driven activities in new business model designs. In a nutshell, be contextual and adapt to the local environment. Thank you.